Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. This is what's coming up on today's show. Now, I have a very inspirational gentleman sitting on the sofa today. A decade ago, he started up his company and it has become an ever-growing success. It is, of course, Stuart Wade from Empire Manufacturing. Welcome to the show, Stuart. When you said inspirational Thanks, person, I thought you were going to say me there, Lindsay. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, Colin, it's taking the limelight. Yeah, I know. You always got to do it, haven't you? <laughs> Sorry, Stuart. Anyway, back to Empire Manufacturing. <laughs> right. 2008, tricky time to start a business. Yes, it was very Tell much so. Tell us about it. Um, yeah, well, in short, uh, we started up. Uh, Empire was only ever going to be uh, me in a small little unit, taking a bit of overflow um, of work from my dad's other company that was very similar to what we are now. Um, obviously, we didn't know that the the economy was going to take the uh, dip that it did. Yeah. So we invested in three brand new star sliding head machines and then didn't have any work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's turned around. We've got through that. Um, some say it's the best time to start a business. If you can survive that, then, uh, you know, it makes you stronger. So, mm -hmm. you know, we did survive it and we're going from strength to strength now. So, yeah, Well, it's, it's a very, very different story today to it what is. you're telling yes. us, yes, you know, definitely. a decade ago. <laughs> but isn't that what businesses are all about? And it shows yeah. the strength of your business to get through it's it. It's a great testimony right, yeah. for hard work and inspiration. That's and right, yeah. I mean, whatnot, you know. anyone thinking of starting a business, you know, they've got to be prepared. Yeah, prepared to put everything into it because yeah. um, mm -hmm. you have to to make it a success. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to discuss a lot of your components, but yeah. just as a bit of a generalisation, sliding head work, what batch sizes are we talking about? Um, not just sliding head work. Um, mm -hmm. We've also got a fixed head CMZ and a three axis mill. Um, so we're sort of branching out into that industry as well now so we can do bigger stuff. Um, still long runs on our, uh, on our big stuff though. Our CMZ's got a gantry loader, so um, anything up to... 185 mil diameter um, with the sliders. Oh, so big, some big parts in. Mm. Yeah, some fairly yeah. fairly big lumps, um, and it would do you know, whatever materials really. It's got yeah. the grunt to, to machine anything. So. so big parts, gantry loader, sli yeah. um, bar feed as well. Yes, bar feeder, yeah. uh, two meter bar feed, yeah. so we can. Uh, and on all the stars, and because all your sliders are stars. Yeah, I mean it's a good complement because we've got that for the the bigger stuff, um, yeah. and then the sliders go up to 35 mil. So um, yeah. anything. Anything from zero up to 180 mil we can handle, really. Um, wow. And batch size for the stars, typically a few hundred to 100,000 parts um, is where we're at. But we do do some jobs that are very low quantities. Um, this is what I wanted to get onto because mm. you think sliding head machines, high batch work. But actually, you're willing to do some quite complex components. And I know yeah. we've got some here, but that's something that is quite unique about you at your company yeah i think so yeah um we we like to get jobs that we can get our teeth stuck into you know see it as a challenge um because it helps us improve and you know i like nothing more than to have a part at the end of the day that i can show people and be proud that i've managed to do that yeah. um so yeah we take on that kind of work um i think it's a good <laughs> example there as well not just the machines because you whenever we see you and speak to you you're always investing and it's, it's yes and I had to use a bit of a cliche, it's a jigsaw, but it's not just the machines, it's, yeah, your staff definitely, but your yeah. software, your tooling, mm. your CMM, yeah. everything like that. So, yeah. well, we'll come to yeah, that later, easy. I think. I, I want to see your I want to see these yeah. parts, <laughs> yes. I want to see your parts. Um, you want to see my parts? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, I, one that really interests me that I haven't ever, ever seen before mm. is this one, because it almost looks like the part has been bent. Yeah. But yeah, has it? He did it in the car right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh, no. So how have you made this? And what is it? It's, <laughs> most people look at it and oh. think it's a spoon. It's a scoop for separating a layer of film from internal organs. Okay. It's um, a medical part. How do you oh. make it? Um, so Don't it's Don't give too many turned... away, though. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> so same as this one. Um, we turn it on the slider, um, fairly standard there, turned and threaded. At this point, we come up and support it, and this bit, um, is purely milled out and it's milled out until it breaks off over on this side um, so it's come off the machine complete. Wow. So 22 mil bar I'm assuming? Uh, the, yeah the bigger one I think yeah. we actually made out of one inch bar okay, um, yeah. just to get the that, that to fall in that envelope yeah, um, okay. to keep bigger size. Ah, but, interesting yeah. part. Can Very. I just interject? That was as a result of some of the videos you've done on MTD Network. It was actually, it? yeah. The, the customer we did those for um, saw us on MTD and got in touch. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. So I mean that part's Oh, sorry, Lindsay, you, do, you go next. No, yeah. I think we were both looking at this as well because <laughs> this is quite a long part to have yeah. on your machine. So yeah. what's quite unique about this and how do you do it? Um, mainly just the length, really. Um, mm -hmm. There's nothing particularly complex about it. It's 
it's had to be done um, in two hits because the, the total length of the machine that would normally um, run that, it wouldn't be able to do that all in one. So we have to mm -hmm. well, sort of double chuck. Um, so you do half of it, um, pull the spindle back, rechuck it there and carry on with it. This isn't actually anywhere near the longest we've done. We've done parts over one metre. Um, and you're doing that on the, on the sliding head machine, though? Yes, uh, yeah, on okay. the star slider again. It's a long part, though. You're thinking it's going to be wobbling at the end. Yeah, well, that's the good thing about these sliders. They're fully supported because um, yeah. it's just feeding out of the guide bush all the time. Okay. So it's, it's really rigid um, at the cutting edge all uh -huh. the time. So it's yeah, makes it um, able to do it. Okay. Next part, Lindsay, I think the one in the sort of middle. Yes, so uh, this one here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's on one, that, well, they're all interesting, but this one yeah. as well. Go on then, t tell um, us, what, what is the part? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I don't even know exactly what this does. Mm. Um, I know what the hole all the way through is. It's a 1.3 mil hole, um, and that's purely for a wire to go through. It's so the surgeons <laughs> don't lose it in your body. Nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anybody so that was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want yeah, to. I, yeah. I learned to not always ask what these parts were for because uh, yeah, some of the answers weren't particularly nice. No, no, that's fine. But, but having the whole all the way through the middle, I'm thinking. Mm. Well, if you can, I don't know if you can see that on the, on the camera there. You've got the flats here, but then the whole hole down the middle. I'm thinking you're probably going to have to EDM that fast hole drilling. Uh, no, we uh, we did it all complete on the on the star. Um, so as it is here. It was one operation, um, it was gun drilled. So. Easy, simple. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Do you find simple? that you have advantages now that you've got the milling machine as well, that you have advantages for the smaller batch work that you do? Yeah, I mean, obviously the mill gives us uh, an extra capability. Um, so where sometimes we'd, well, we'd always do milled jobs on our stars or on our CMZ because um, they're fully capable. But if they're busy, then small batch things, we can get them on the mill, um, even if it's not the perfect machine to do it. it. just gives us that little bit extra capacity. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's just another string to our bow, really. I think as well, you know, the smaller batch ones, like those medical parts, people think large batch ones, sliding head, but that mm. ties in with investment because the, you've got solid cam software. We do, yes. And yeah. that part there was, I don't know, 28,000 lines of code from... Cur yeah, well, just the milling part, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, the rest of it before that was fairly simple. Uh, oh, okay, you make it sound but... simple. <laughs> but again, that's just highlighting, not just machines, investing. Mm. So, other, yes, definitely. you've got your solid cam, what other things have you invested in? Solid cam, um, obviously, factory wiz software so we can keep them on so on the machines. So, with factory wiz, you're able to see production, you know, how, how the machines are working, yeah. if downtime, if someone's... Yeah, to learn um, or like I mean, <laughs> factories is great. It's not going to fix all the problems for you, but it gives you the information yeah. to then decide what you need to do mm. to, to get better production and become more efficient. Yeah. And so. also means you don't have to come in on weekends, is that right? Uh, still Ish. Have to come in, but <laughs> not as much. We've, we've had jobs where we've known they've had to run, and it's a mm. case of uh, before I would pop back into work at eight, nine o'clock at night to make yep. sure it's running, and if it is great, go home again. Yep. With this, you can just look on your phone and go, oh, it's still running, perfect, it's done, Brilliant. X amount of yeah. parts, you know, no problems, no alarms. I can stay at home and watch a bit of TV. Whatever. Yeah, nice, <laughs> well, you that's to the way doing, it works. So. Yeah. Now, last year you actually did a video for MTD yeah. and you were talking about investing in machines. I think it was about the summer of last year. Yes. Have you invested in more machines? We have done, yes, um, and employees as well, actually. Um, we've bought a Star SR, 20J um, with JBS Guide, Bush High Pressure Coolant, um, just to give us again a little bit more capacity. Mm -hmm. um, jobs like this, we, we just needed another machine with high pressure coolant and that sort of thing on. So uh, we've also got a full time inspector now as well because we bought a Mitotoyo um, Vision Probe machine. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a big step forward for us because um, where we're doing more and more complex work, we now need to be able to check it and be confident that it's going out the door correct. Yeah. So, yeah, having a dedicated inspector. Definitely, uh, definitely a big help for us. <laughs> so, all in all, what is the work? If someone's watching, what's the work you're after now? Um, I'm, well, I'm thinking we'd... high margin, easy, big batch. <laughs> yeah, on. yeah, that'd be Sorted. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, that'd be the ideal. Um, we're we're mainly set up for medium to large batches. Um, so, again, sort of a thousand to a hundred thousand is our perfect sort of range, but. Like you've said, we will do anything. Um, so we're interested in anything that anyone wants us to take a look at. Um, we'll always see if we can do it. Like a cha like a challenge, isn't like it? Like a challenge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, You're definitely. based in Hertfordshire, aren't you? We are, yeah, Hobbiston, Hertfordshire. Perfect. Yes. Do you want to get involved with our Cycle Time Challenge? Yeah, why not? Let's give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go to 
the, the cycle yeah. time challenge, if I can say that. Mm. You said when you start 2008? Yes. January 2008? Yes. Guess what then? That makes, by my calculations, you're 10 years old. 10 years, you are the so, mathematician, aren't you? <laughs> well, there you go. Somewhere, allegedly, there's a small present. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's coming in a minute. So don't oh, right, okay. It's coming in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Should we watch the cycle time, yeah, time challenge? Time yeah, let's go for that. Let's have a little watch. watch. <laughs> Cycle Time Challenge. Okay, guys, thanks for this. This week's Cycle Time Challenge is an absolute beauty. How was this programmed? Yeah, we programmed the Eagle by utilizing uh, uh, Autodesk uh, Power Mill software. The programming time for this Eagle was almost 80 hours. Has been programmed by one of the partner comp companies we are working with and has been cut completely in two setups on our V9 high speed milling machine. Well, it's a stunning piece, so thank you very much. Right, guys, how long will this take to machine? Back to the studio. Wow, as Joe just said, what a beauty. <laughs> and that was a bird, not Joe. Um, but <laughs> Stuart, what, now also, it's not programming time that we no, just yeah. noticed. We said 80 yeah. hours yeah. programming. Yeah. Yes, so 80 hours, forget that. Yeah. Um, but it's machining, so what's your guess? And well, Colin, you next. I'm guessing it's aluminium. Um, See, I'm traditionally turning, so... Yeah, <laughs> you've got a yeah. machine if now, it was so a, you haven't yeah. got a spacer or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to have a complete, off the top of my head guess, 92 minutes. 92, oh, 92 minutes, that's minutes. fast. Cool. Go on. I don't know what machine it's on, so... No, that's no. true, it is a bit out there. Go on, Yeah, then, Joe, next time, what machine? Um, three hours. Three hours. Yes. So right. 180 was, minutes. Yeah, that was my initial <laughs> thought. But, but well, you know, with, with modern software and modern mm. machines, yeah. it could be really quick. So. Well, well you'll right, find you know, out. You know, you know, I'm not having a guess. I'm out of it. Guess, but <laughs> you can have a guess as well. And the winner, if you put in the comment box below your guess, and the winner will receive a Swarf and Chips goodie bag. So we do wish you the very, very best of luck. Now, you said a prop. Yes, Harley. I did. Well, as I worked out, 10 years, 10 years young. Yes. So no expense paid or spared, <laughs> as is usual. So there we go. We have and, a little surprise. Oh, very nice. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I, baked, I baked this myself last Did night. You? Oh, I like, <laughs> So <laughs> don't get a knife Here on we it. Go. We actually not, might need a milling machine to break into Happy it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Empire Manufacturing. Happy birthday to you. There you go. There goes smoke alarm. Make a wish. Smoke alarms, and I didn't know you were tone deaf, Lindsay. There we go. And you've not long had a baby boy, so uh, congratulations. Uh, baby, girl. baby girl, sorry. <laughs> sorry, baby girl. You've got two boys. Yes. Right, okay. So congratulations to thank you. Thank you very much. As well. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And um, good luck. And will you be at the Mac show? I certainly will, yes. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, because you heard we've got VIP lounge shows coming for drinks and sandwiches. Yeah, I couldn't find you guys <laughs> last time, so I'll definitely have to search a little bit. Oh, you will. Side. You'll yeah. find us this year. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you very much. MTD on location. Yeah, sorry I can't be in the studio this week. I'm with Will Burrows from Zola UK. I'm at uh, Zola's headquarters in Foston in Derbyshire. I've got a bit of a treat for you today. Will's going to tell us about this uh, tool presetter that we've got here, and then we're going to tell you about a special offer that's happening. So, Will, firstly, could you just tell us what this model of uh, presetter is? So this is our Zola Smile Compact, um, currently running with our Pilot One starter software. So this is our base entry uh, tool presetter. Okay, compared to other presetters on the market, uh, if you had to, uh, were looking to tell people the benefits of this particular brand, what would you say? What's good about Zola? So personally, I'd say Zola is market leader. We have the best software, uh, very intuitive software. The accuracy also of our machines is, is very good. And what's the advantage to using a tool presetter offline rather than measuring tools on a machine? So obviously when we set the tools offline or we set the tools away from the machine, it means then that our machines can be cutting constantly. We have no downtime on the machines. Also we have a little bit extended accuracy there as well and uh, a little bit more control. Okay, now just do a very quick demonstration of how this would work. I'm led to believe that this actual tool in here is a uh, a fifth of the price of the actual machine unit is that correct yes yeah. yes incredible yeah it's either a, a, a very expensive tool or a very cheap machine one of the or one or the other way around I don't yeah. know but you uh, you crack on okay so basically the routine here is is made as easy as possible for the operators so essentially all we do now is we load a predetermined program 
inside this program we have all the checks, um, all the nominals and all the tolerance values that are decided up the line if you like. This ensures now that the, the tool has to conform to those predefined checks before it's sent out to the machine tool. We load the predefined program and essentially now the operator will just load the tool once it's loaded into the machine here, position the camera. And once we start to measure the tool here, we see exactly whether the tool is passed or failed and it will tell us exactly where it's failed and how it's failed and whether we either stop the tool here or we can allow this to... And when you talk about failure, you're talking about length, diameter, what is it exactly. on this tool? Exactly. So the lengths and the diameters, anything that we want to check here, run outs, uh, any corner radius sizes, any angles, uh, absolutely and anything. That's to me is one of the advantages of using this over maybe laser probing on a machine. Correct. You can't tell whether it's one insert is extensively, you know, uh, the dimensions are incorrect here, you get a full picture. Exactly, yeah. So with the lasers, we, we have limitations, so we can only check realistically lengths. Uh, run out checks are very difficult, if not impossible to check here. Whereas on the Zola, we can check absolutely everything we need to check. And once you've checked it, you use this printout, you print it out, put it on the tool, and it goes back into the, into the tool uh, storage. Exactly. There's a number of different ways we can work with this. So we can work with a simple label. So we stick a label on the tool, we take it to the machine tool. Or we can work with a little bit more advanced software and start to send the data directly to the machine or directly to an error on the network, should I say. Also, we look to work with Baloff chips as well, so we can put the data straight onto a Baloff chip. Again, this eliminates all human error. It's crazy when you do go around a lot of machine shops, they don't operate this type of tool presetting, and, and they really should do. Uh, this is some facility to come to as well, because uh, you've not just got this one machine here in Foston, you've got a lot, haven't you, to show from Zola? Exactly, yeah, we've got basically quite, if not a whole range, uh, an extensive range, covering all the different softwares, all the types of machines that we can sell, uh, tool presetting, but also tool inspection, uh, TMS, stock location, everything. The whole lot very centrally located in the UK. So we did mention at the start this about a special offer. This particular unit, this um, compact machine is on special offer now between now and Mac, which is in April, starts on April the 9th. Uh, there, is a, there is an offer on this machine. You need to contact Zola UK directly. I believe your website is zola-uk.com. Is that That's correct? correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, to, to find out more and to, to see what you can save and talk to the guys here at Zola, visit that URL. Emma, here we are again on Sunday. It's been a busy show. Um, what, what, what are your highlights? Um, the show, I suppose, is um, our car. It's astronomically more powerful than anything else I've seen. I'm really impressed by the two V12 engines in the uh, drag tractors. Quite like the look of the new Lamborghini. The new Ferrari as well looks incredible. The power they've got behind that, very nice styling. Um, yeah, excellent. I made the Lotus as well. And can I just ask you, after we did our interview on Friday, what did you do when you got home? Well, Friday evening, every evening, got to watch Swarf and Chips. Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. Also, if you want to get involved in our Cycle Time Challenge, don't forget to comment in the comment boxes below. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. Thank <laughs> you.